Hello, welcome to another Sims 4 speed build. Before we get talking about today's build, um, I just want to apologize for the really low quality of my reaction, trailer reaction video. I was essentially, to make a very long story short, I was suffering a really bad case of sleep inertia. My dog has had insomnia for the last couple of weeks, and so have I. So one or both of us has been up most of the night for a couple of weeks now, and yesterday my body was just struggling under the strain of it. So poor quality video. I'm very sorry about that. Uh, the other thing is, is apparently... I was allowed to play the sound of the trailer in my video, but here's the thing. The rules are so vague and complicated and not at all straightforward, and YouTube enforces them, um, shall we say, unevenly, and so I never know what's allowed and what's not allowed. And I didn't want to play the sound of the video only to find out afterwards, like I did previously, that I can't have the sound on in the video and have to redo everything. So two reasons why my video was kind of poor quality yesterday, and I very, very much apologize for that. So let's move on to today's build. The gameplay trailer from yesterday kind of gave me an idea now you can't make hotels in the sims 4 yet i firmly believe though that this is a step towards making hotels i think it's something they want to work on or they are already working on or at least they're thinking about it because the way the leasing and um, rent payment system is set up, it is very similar to how a hotel would be set, set up. Let's put it that way. So even though you can't make true hotels, you can make something that's very similar to a hotel and for like story purposes or whatever, it can more or less function enough like a, a hotel to make it worth it if you get the four rent expansion pack. And that gave me an idea. So I don't know about other places, but the very incredibly rural and fairly small town that I live in has two long-term living motels and my understanding is that essentially all a long-term living motel is is a motel that will rent per day like any other hotel or motel but they will also rent by the week and i think by the month if you need it as well and it's basically a place for people to go if they don't have any other housing options available to them at the moment. And that's kind of, that kind of gave me some ideas. I sort of built that. I mean, essentially it is. Motels usually don't have uh, like full cafeterias or kitchens on the premises, but I built one for this. So basically it is a long-term living motel, but with a cafeteria on the pre uh, premises. And the reason for that is that this will work as a for rent property as long as there is at least one kitchen and one bathroom available to all of the tenants. So what that means is you can have one singular set of bathrooms and one singular kitchen cafeteria area, area, <laughs> sorry, and you have to mark it shared so all tenants can access it or each apartment has to have kitchen and bathroom items 
inside of it. Does that make sense? I'm trying really hard to explain this and I feel like I'm not doing a very good job of it, but basically your the sims that you have on your rental lot have to have access to kitchen and bathroom items. Otherwise, I believe it will not function. Like it'll be like a community lot where you've forgotten one of the required items and it just doesn't function properly. That's what will happen here. So rather than putting mini kitchens in each of the hotel rooms, I decided to put a cafeteria slash kitchen building in. Now this is just the way I chose to do it. You could choose to have it be a little hotel cafe. I've been to campgrounds and motels that have little like cafe type um, places on the premises. So you could choose to have it be like a little cafe and have the kitchen um, set off into its own room. Your Sims would still have to do the cooking you can't like there's no cook you could hire as the landlord to do the cooking for the so-called cafe um but you could do it it could work especially for storytelling purposes it could work just fine uh, but I chose to go the cafeteria route just because that's the way I was feeling at the moment I don't know honestly that's just what I felt this lot needed, I guess, was a open kitchen cafeteria area where your sims could go and cook their own foods and stuff. This space right here that I'm working on right now, in case it wasn't obvious, um, which it probably was, but I'm going to point it out <laughs> anyways because I'm weird like that, but this is basically the landlord's or the so-called uh, motel manager's area, living area. And then obviously the front office where you would go to rent rooms or whatever. You know what I mean? So that's what this building is here. I did not include a laundry facility on this lot because I'm using base game and the werewolves pack only. Nothing else. This is in Moonwood Mill and it's for the werewolves. Hence it being extremely run down. I wanted it to fit in with all the other like commercial type of buildings in the area like the library and stuff. So it's extremely run down, not well kept up, at least aesthetically, it's not well kept up. Your sim could, even with the way it looks, keep up the motel really, really well and still get a high rating. So that won't be an issue. This is just the way it's visually decorated, if that makes sense. Um... I did try to customize some of the rooms a little bit with a variety of different things just to accommodate a variety of different families and stuff. No pet stuff. Again, it's just base game and uh, the werewolves pack. So there's... Speaking of that, I don't love the way that this is decorated. If I could add a couple more packs onto this, I definitely would because I would like some of the uh, like mysterious, um, like I don't know what they are. They're green. They look like water spots or something from uh, Strangerville pack. And then I would add some of the vampire um, like scratches, not the scratches. What would I add from the vampire one? I'm sure there's other water spots and stuff I would add from the vampire one. Um, especially on the ground. 
There are a couple of different water spots from those two packs for the ground that I think look really cool and they would look a lot better on the sidewalk areas. Uh, and then City Living has some dingy walls that I would have added onto the walls. So if you have any of those packs, those are really great things to add to the atmosphere of this build, by the way. And it's super simple just to go through and replace all of the indoor walls with the dingy ones from City Living or to just place a few of those water spots on that sidewalk right there so it gives the sidewalk a really old used look to it if you will so yeah that's what I would have added if I'd have used more packs I don't I don't love a building with limited packs let me say that first I don't love doing um builds that have like all of the packs either though because I have heard that it's actually pretty rare for someone to own all of the packs and like the percentage of the community that owns all of the packs is extremely small right so I don't want to do um, builds that have all of the packs that are not usable by a lot of people as far as making my builds um, accessible. I am going to be honest in saying that I do often feel extremely limited in my builds because of that and not having access to a lot of things I'm considering maybe doing some builds every now and then with free custom content because that would be something that would be more accessible to more people and there are a higher percentage of people in The Sims that play The Sims that download custom content than there are people that buy all of the packs. Does that make sense? I'm just thinking about it. I don't know if I'm actually going to do it. I do prefer, tend to prefer playing vanilla games because <laughs> these days, let's be honest, well, any days, games can have so many problems. And then the computer that you have plus the game can create more problems and then to add mods and a ton of custom items and and stuff like that to your game you're basically asking for a lot of frustration and troubles and god i can't even get mods to work with minecraft anymore i mostly only play vanilla minecraft well when i used to play minecraft because all of a sudden, one day, I could no longer get mods to work with Minecraft, no matter what I did. I downloaded something like 20 or 30 mods, and I, no matter what I did, could not get them to work. And it's not like I don't know what I'm doing. I played modded Minecraft for many years. I, I knew how to download um, the, the thing to do it, the... Uh, what was it forge uh, mod or whatever and I knew how to download and install the mods and all of that kind of stuff but just out of nowhere one day the game that I was trying to install uh, mods on it just would not the mods just would not show up and I uninstalled everything reinstalled it I did this like 15 times for that computer and no matter what I did I could not get that I tried fabric instead of forge and I could not get mods to show up in that game on that computer and back in the sims 2 days no was it sims 2 or was it sims 1 it might have been sims 1 there were a couple of times I downloaded custom content for the sims one the more minor of the issues was that it looked terrible 
people were just taking magazine photos and slapping them onto objects and it was bad like they would take screenshots and stuff that would make them look good so then you would download them and it would be so bad in the actual game it was so horrible I got burned so many times by that but the bigger issue was that there were so many viruses going through the community at the time and people didn't care. They were making custom content and they weren't checking the files and they weren't keeping their computers updated and safe and everything. And so there were just viruses spreading through the sims community that might have been the sims two days but anyways i actually ruined a computer downloading custom content because i got a pretty wicked virus from that so needless to say i tend to be a vanilla player <laughs> i don't want the added frustration or hassle of all of that stuff but I do recognize that most people don't feel the way I do. They haven't had the experiences that I have had. And they're not afraid of mods and custom content the way I am. And so most people download some amount of custom, excuse me, custom content. My voice is starting to wear out. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Good thing we only have a few minutes left, right? Um, but anyways... It is something I'm considering just to be even more accessible to more people uh, because custom content is supposed to be free after a certain amount of time. They can charge you for like the first two or three weeks or something for early access to their custom content, but then they have to offer it to everyone for free. Um, so... Obviously, I would only download free stuff and I would only put free stuff in my build so that it's accessible to everyone. Again, just something I'm thinking about and wanted to get off my mind and talk about a little bit. I See, excuse me, this is where I kind of customized the rooms a little bit. So I added a spare cot to one, a toddler bed to another, and a pack and play like portable crib to another I do go back and add some toys for children toddlers and infants um but that's about all I really oh no I added coffee makers later to each of the rooms so that they could have oh no I already did that okay never mind <laughs> I thought I already did it but I couldn't see them for some reason so I thought maybe it was coming later in the build oh one of the rooms I did add a small fishbowl right there just just for something different I guess and that room is also like I envision an older couple living there maybe wanting to do some gardening so oh I have one last thing to tell you if you're a Dreamlight Valley fan I have a couple of episodes that I forgot to post that I'm planning on posting either this weekend or early next week potentially hopefully if I get them done in time they were supposed to come out way back at the beginning of November, but with all the Sims 4 rent news, I completely forgot about them. So look forward to those if you're into that. And let's get into these screenshots, shall we? We are in beautiful downtown Moonwood Mills, and I changed my mind. I decided I wanted to do a walkthrough the way I used to do when I first started this channel instead of just the screenshots. So let's head into the front office. Here is the front office and the landlord can't actually control the building from anything in here. I don't think like I don't think the computer will be useful uh, rather, everything is controlled by a sign you put out in the front of the building. So this is really just for looks. It will be like a private office area for your landlord, but it was still cute to include anyways. And then right in here is your landlord's suite with a little sleeping and sitting area. 
their own private kitchen. They're the only one that gets a private kitchen, a TV area, and then a bathroom right through here. Let's head over to the kitchen slash cafeteria. This is the front yard, I guess you would call it. And it's just kind of full of trash. Not much of anything to do or look at, but, well, the bonfire. Your sims will be able to use the bonfire, which I hope would count as an amenity towards your rating but we'll find out won't we and then you have the what are, what are we calling it cafeteria kitchen it's an open cafeteria kitchen to all of the sims there are three microwaves so multiple sims can be making foods at the same time because there's only one stove and one fridge but there are plenty of places for your sims to sit and enjoy their meals with their fellow um, renters. Now let's head over to each of the motel rooms. In total, there's only four, so it shouldn't be too laggy of a lot. It's plenty for this kind of town, this kind of area. Uh, cause it's a, Moonwood Mill is a very small town, so I thought it was plenty for that. Then we have room, well, I guess this would be room number four, because we go left to right. So, we're down at the right end, so this is room number four, with a little pack-and-play type travel crib for an infant. And then just the two full-size beds, the little sink coffee area that are in motels quite often and then a very basic bathroom and there you have the room again let's head over to room number two this is room number two with a toddler bed otherwise pretty identical the bathrooms are all identical the little sink area should all be identical for the most part this one just has a toddler bed and a toy box for a child and a toddler, but otherwise basically the same as apartment number four, and I believe this one would be apartment number three. We are going backwards, so let's go to apartment number two, or I guess hotel room number two. So this is the one with the spare cot in it. Uh, I feel like this would be a room used for people that have multiple children and a teenager, and so they just needed the one extra cot for a teenager to sleep on, and they have a pet fish. Why not? And then again, the bathroom. So let's head over to apartment or hotel motel room number one. And this is the one with the little planters outside. Now, technically, any Sims will use these little planters, but I was hoping by placing a seed packet in here, these Sims in here would get the idea that the planters are for them. And this is the most basic of all rooms. No extra amenities for children. Just a couple of beds, probably for maybe um an older couple most of these types of motel rooms come with two beds so that's why i included two beds uh but i don't know what your sims would use the second bed for honestly i just wanted it to be an authentic motel that's why i did that even though i envisioned this just being maybe an older couple on their own and then that's it. The The buildings pretty much take up the entirety of the lot except this small area right here where they can have a bonfire and apparently dump their trash at. I don't know. <laughs> when for rent comes out, that mailbox can be traded for the new mailbox and you can put your for rent sign right out here by the office and... Yeah, there's three outdoor trash cans. There should be trash cans basically in every livable room. And 
I think that's it. I think I covered everything. So if you enjoyed this build, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye!